Get in the game with NFL Sunday Ticket from Rev TV. You'll get every game every Sunday afternoon in crystal clear HD. That's over 220 football games for the entire regular season. Plus, NFL Sunday Ticket gives you up to eight live games on one screen with Game Mix. You'll get that died and woke up in football heaven experience when you include NFL Red Zone, a channel dedicated to every scoring play from every game and all your fantasy football teams. Get in the game with NFL Sunday Ticket. Call 601-8992 today. Good evening, Bahamas. Here's what's coming up in MB12 weekend. Government plans to rebuild homes destroyed by Hurricane Joaquin. How one southern island is spending its annual homecoming in the wake of that storm. The public urged to be vigilant when donating to relief efforts. A man murdered at a popular watering hole. Why the business community is frustrated with value-added tax, plus a controversial suggestion to significantly reduce crime. I'm Paige McCartney. We've got those stories and more straight ahead on NB12 Weekend. Welcome once again to MB12 Weekend. Prime Minister Perry Christie has said it will cost government millions of dollars to rebuild those communities affected by Hurricane Joaquin. On Crooked Island alone, he said 65% of homes received major damage, 25% moderate damage, and 4% destroyed. While he couldn't give a projected figure of how much it would cost government to rebuild the homes destroyed, Minister of Housing Kenra Dorsett said all available resources will be used. That means, according to the minister, ongoing projects on the family islands will have to stop for now. We do uh, uh, know that the Department of Housing in particular and the ministry as a corporation so will have to do its part in the reconstruction exercises that will take place in the family islands. Um, and so the new construction uh, for some of the family islands, uh, we are putting on, we, we, we have decided to, to put them at a standstill. So, for example, we've begun construction in San Salvador and they've begun cutting for foundations and building those foundations. We have indicated to our builders there that once the government advances its reconstruction efforts, we would want those approved builders who are currently working for the Department of Housing to really prioritize getting their fellow brothers and sisters on the island uh, uh, back to a sense of normalcy. Housing projects on New Providence will continue, Dorset said. And as devastating as the storm was, Dorset said it affords government and residents an opportunity to reconsider the sustainability of development on those islands. He said focus will be placed on town planning. It gives us an opportunity, obviously, to have a dialogue with our people on making sure that when we construct, we, we construct in strict adherence to the building code. We also have an opportunity to discuss future planning of settlements, whether they are to remain in the same areas, and if they are to remain in the same areas, what do we do differently with respect to how we construct in those areas? or whether or not the communities have determined that they also want to have a dialogue about rerouting certain roads and so forth. So sustainable planning becomes very important in this exercise. It also provides an opportunity for sustainable building, he said. That is, ensuring the materials used in constructing the homes make sense for their locations. For example, in San Salvador, we would have seen homes that were constructed in 2005 and 2006 in the wake of the hurricane that devastated that island. And those structures uh, were built, they are actually T11 structures, wooden structures on, on concrete foundations that weathered this storm, minimal damage to those homes. Um, just as we have homes in Acklands that were built um, that have withstood the storm. But once again, strict adherence to building codes. Uh, and so that's one of the things that we want to reinforce in this reconstruction uh, exercise. Government is awaiting the completion of damage assessments to determine exactly how much restoration will cost. Prime Minister Perry Christie is expected to provide further details on government's restoration efforts in the coming weeks. Well, when Hurricane Joaquin swept through San Salvador, it washed away more than just homes, furniture and priceless possessions. 
It also impacted plans for one of the biggest events on that island's social calendar. Here's Jasmine Brown. It was supposed to be one of the biggest weekends for residents of San Salvador, but thanks to Hurricane Joaquin, it's more about recovery efforts than celebrations. Honorary member of the San Salvador Discovery Day Committee, Marzell Francis, says the Discovery Day holiday weekend has long been the biggest event for residents, bringing in visitors for three days of celebrations. A lot of um, the San Salvadorans take friends, and so it becomes a thing that you look forward to. Um, and this year um, is no different from the other years in terms of planning and you know, so there was great anticipation for the weekend. Joaquin battered the central and southern Bahamas last weekend. Long Island, Rum Key, Acklands, Crooked Island and San Salvador were among the islands impacted by the storm. But the damage caused by the storm has put an end to all those months of planning and anticipation. Many of the event sites were destroyed. Despite the change of plans, Francis says residents are not broken but will use the weekend to rebuild. Many San Salvadorians are expected to head back home to assist. While the weekend has been put off as a fun weekend, um, most persons are still trying to get down to assist their families with um, clean up and stuff. And um, even though we are a little battered right now, um, we're not broken. And so the whole thing is persons going up, trying to help with the clean up. Um, we had quite a bit of supplies that went up. So there is still help needed in terms of packing and distribution. And so wherever we can, we're trying to just get there to assist to bring us back up on our feet. Francis says their drive to rebuild shows the strength and resilience of residents who were looking to move on and get back some sense of normalcy. San Salvadorians are resilient people. A tree fell on the house and that's done, we look at it, the tree fell, let's get it off, let's move forward. And Francis says there is still a need for assistance as many families try to pick up the pieces. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, since Hurricane Joaquin made its way through the Bahamas, organizations have sprung into action collecting and distributing supplies. The Rotaract Club of Southeast Nassau has been there from the start, teaming up with Trans Island Aviation to provide immediate relief. President of Southeast Nassau Club, Dr. Bridget Roll, says they've donated supplies, raised money, and provided a steady supply of volunteers. We had in excess of 200 volunteers who brought supplies, who packaged, sorted, palletized, wrapped, and stored supplies for the various islands. Supplies include water, non-perishables, baby food, and other baby items, pet food, toiletries, sanitary and cleaning supplies, battery-operated flashlights and radios with batteries, non-electric portable stoves, and tarps. Roll adds that Rotary International has also established a website for monetary donations at Indiegogo.com. Rotary International has established a link by which you can donate funds. While donors and those providing aid for victims of Hurricane Joaquin must remain vigilant and on the lookout for fraudsters attempting to capitalize on the growing number of, of aid and initiatives in the wake of the storm. That warning's coming from former PLP MP Philip Galanis, who said government must provide transparency and accountability in ensuring that donations and other aid provided by local and international parties reach those in need as opportunities for fraudsters invariably arose following Hurricane Joaquin relief efforts. He said what tends to happen in these instances is that people see an opportunity to personally benefit and that is really where the real danger lies. Galanis pointed to stories where even in developed countries people make contributions that never end up going to storm victims. Soon after Hurricane Joaquin devastated a wide portion of southeastern Bahamas last week, relief efforts surged into the impacted area with U.S. organizations similarly offering their assistance in providing residents with essential supplies. Opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis caught flack earlier this week after advising persons to donate solely to the Bahamas Red Cross and its partners, arguing for a coordinated effort through the proper channels. However, private groups largely outpaced government agencies and non-governmental organization 
initiatives in some of the most impacted communities. In other news, police say one of the two men shot at Potter's Key Dock last night has died. Reports are that shortly after 10 last night, two men were about to enter a vehicle when two armed assailants ran up to them, shot them, and then ran away. Officer in charge of the Central Detective Unit, Chief Superintendent Paul Roll says one of the men died in hospital and the other is in stable condition in hospital. What we do know is that a, a young man was getting into his vehicle after leaving one of the eateries here at Porter's Key when he was accosted by two individuals, both armed with handguns, who uh, began discharging shots at him as he got into his vehicle. He uh, attempted to drive off and crash at the uh, exit to Porter's Key. Uh, persons observing what had taken place uh, ran to his assistance and took him in a private vehicle to Princess Margaret Hospital, uh, where he was pronounced dead upon arrival. Uh, another concerned citizen uh, who observed two of the suspects shortly after the shooting incident pursued these individuals with his vehicle and uh, pinned one of the suspects into this car that is just here behind me uh, and attempt to apprehend the suspect who produced a firearm and uh, forced him to allow him to, to uh, allow him to leave. And so he allowed that suspect to uh, live in fear for his life.